Jimmy Butler just dropped the third 40-point triple-double in NBA Finals history, so let's look at how he dominated and led the Heat to a victory without Bam Adebayo and Goran Dragic to take down LeBron James and Anthony Davis almost single-handedly. As Jeff Van Gundy said on the air, this was one of the greatest performances he'd ever seen, and I'd have to agree with that statement. This man was getting to the rim with abandon. I mean, Rajon Rondo hammered him, and he still just kept attacking and really just outplayed LeBron in the fourth quarter. LeBron had a rough game overall, and that was because Jimmy Butler was guarding him on the other end, and then just hitting insane shots on offense. The man was on another planet tonight and proved himself as a top 10 player in this league. And if there's one man every basketball fan and media member owes an apology to, it's Jimmy Butler because I think we labeled him as a bad leader when Chicago gave up on him and things didn't go right with Wiggins and Towns in Minnesota, and then of course in Philadelphia, we all just thought that was because of Jimmy not being able to lead the way properly, and we were completely wrong to assume that, because this man is an absolute gamer, he's always been this type of a competitor, and that energy just helps his teammates so much, it pushes them over the top because they know that they have a top two-way player on their side that's not only into it on the floor, but is into it on the bench, loves his teammates, encourages his teammates. I mean, I don't really think there's a better leader in the NBA than Jimmy Butler. Maybe Chris Paul, maybe LeBron James, but other than that, I wouldn't put anyone over Jimmy. He's that great at leading his teammates and pushing them to levels we never thought we, they could reach. I mean, look at Tyler Harrow, how his relationship with him. I mean, Tyler's only a rookie and Jimmy just takes him under his wing. I did an entire separate video on the truth about Tyler Harrow where I went in depth on their relationship, but this man Jimmy Butler just takes all of his teammates, whether they have experience or not, and instills his trust in them, believes in them, even if they miss a shot, he's not going to get all over them. He just likes guys that compete, and obviously, when he was back in Chicago, when he was back in Minnesota with Towns and Wiggins, and when he was in Philadelphia with Embiid and Simmons, that the players that he was playing with back then just weren't at the same competitive level that he was. They didn't put their heart out like these Heat members do in 2020. So is this a new series is another story because the Lakers look dominant in games one and two, but when Bam and Dragic come back, you gotta be concerned about this Heat team if you're a Laker fan. Because being led at the top by Jimmy Buckets, who's looking on fire right now, he's looking like he's not going down without a fight. This series looks like it's going at the very least six games, it could potentially go seven, and who knows what happens in a seventh game. And I think it could very well get to that game, because what I just saw from Jimmy was insane. He was making brilliant fallaway jump shot one after another, setting up his teammates, getting into the lane with reckless abandon. I mean, the man did it all tonight. He just was an absolute menace going to the paint. There was talk of this being a sweep after game two, and Jimmy clearly took that personally and showed that he's one of the best players in this league and showing he's not gonna back down from the Lakers star power. I mean, I don't think the Lakers have seen anything close to what Jimmy is. I mean, they saw James Harden, but he's not the same type of defensive player that Jimmy is, and he certainly doesn't have the will to win like Butler does. So I mean, the Lakers are still in control of this series, there's no denying that. But they've gotta be worried, given how much they were fouling Jimmy, and given how much he looked so unstoppable getting to the rim, they couldn't do anything to slow the man down. The role players for the Heat played much better this game, that's gonna be crucial going forward in this series. Jimmy's gonna have to have guys who can hit shots around him. Tyler Harrow knocked a few in late, Myers Leonard was knocking some in, and Kelly Olynyk has really stepped up to my surprise, so those floor spacers heating up should really help him as this series progresses. Obviously getting Bam and Goron back would be ideal, but if you can't get your all-stars back, these guys hitting shots is massive. That could put the heat over the top, but Butler, man, Jimmy freaking buckets. And I want to know if you think that this was just a one-game fluke, or do you think the Heat are back in this series? Do you think Jimmy Butler made a mark here, really scared the Lakers, and got the Heat right back in this series? So let me know down in the comments section below. This was D-Flow. And I'll see you next video.